Well, welcome back to The Pew, everybody. I am your host, John Edwards, and this week I'm in studio flying solo. It is Labor Day weekend, and I was going the first couple days to my dad's farm, my place of refuge, if you will, and Victor is today on Sunday after church spending time with his family, and I'm sure getting ready for the Florida State game. It's coming on tonight. He's a huge Florida State fan. But we weren't able to get together today for this episode. And the other reason I'm doing it alone is because we're bringing in Dr. Bob Schutz and the Healing the Whole Person team from the JP2 Healing Center for a huge event called Healing the Whole Person that we're having at one of our churches here in the diocese this week. Myself and a team of many others have been preparing for two years to bring this event. And the speakers are going to be here. The team's going to be here from Tuesday of this week through Sunday. So it didn't leave a lot of time to record. So needed to jump in here today. And we're going to be talking about something that I just mentioned a second ago. Refuge and the need to have refuge in our life. We're going to jump into that here in a second. But first, I want to talk to you about an opportunity to take refuge. Now, what do I mean by that? For the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about how Angel and I have been discussing pilgrimages, and we had settled on one, but I couldn't discuss it because I had to wait for the details to be finalized and to sign the per- paperwork and all that and find a great spiritual director. Now, all of that has been done. So I'm excited to announce that on June the 3rd through the 14th of 2024, next year, Angel and I will be leading a pilgrimage, which is a Eucharistic Miracles Tour of Italy. That's right. We're going to be going to Italy, somewhere I've always wanted to go. Angela is part Italian. She's always wanted to go there. She, in fact, is graduating grad school right before we're going to go next year. And it'll be our 17th anniversary when we go. So it's going to be an amazing journey to go over there for us personally. But we know it will be for you, too. We're going to visit sites where Eucharistic miracles took place. We're going to go to great uh, uh, Italian cities like Rome, Assisi, Oroveto, uh, Lanciano, Laredo, the Isle of Capri, Sorianto, um, we'll see what else, San Giovanni. We're going to go all over the place, and you're going to get to walk in the footsteps of saints like St. Paul, St. Peter, St. Augustine, St. Ignatius, St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Catherine of Siena, Blessed Carlo Acutis, uh, and I'm sure I'm missing a few. But we're going to be over there for 14 days, not only enjoying the wonderful sights and all these beautiful churches and the sites of these historic Eucharistic miracles, but we're also going to be able to stay in five-star accommodations and eat you know, amazing Italian food and just to enjoy fellowship and refuge to get away and to grow closer to our Lord through the lives of these amazing saints and these amazing places that they walked and lived. So... I hope that you all consider joining us. There is only one bus for this tour, right? For this pilgrimage. There's only one bus, which means only 47 people can go. So we have limited space. And I got to tell you, already since we launched it today on the website, we've had 12 people sign up. So that that space is shrinking as we go. Now, we have an amazing spiritual director for this, this trip as well. His name is Father Joe Sachs. He's a local priest for the Diocese of Memphis. But what's amazing about him, and many things, he's an amazing homilist and great spiritual director, but he lived in Italy. Actually, the areas of literally, literally Italy that we're going to visit. He was actually ordained a deacon in Laredo. Now, he was there serving for 23 years in Italy as a priest, and he's excited to go back. He speaks fluent Italian, and he's going to be an amazing, amazing addition to an already awesome trip. So we can't wait for you to sign up and join us. So how do you do that? You can either go to Select International Tours. You can just Google that, and at the top of their page is a search bar. You can put in my name, John Edwards, and it'll pull up a page. And right there, you can click to sign up for the pilgrimage. Or you can go to our website at justagayonthepew.com and click uh, click the Events and Book Me page. And right there in the middle of that page will be a link to go and visit uh, the site where you could sign up and register. We'd love to have you join us. It's going to be an amazing trip. We fell in love with pilgrimage. We have relationships and friendships we built from our trip to the Holy Land, and we can't wait to do that again. So if you've ever wanted to go to Italy, if you wanted to travel with us, if you want to just go see amazing places, then consider signing up to join us again at Select International Tours or at justagayonthepew.com. I want to say thank you again to all our amazing supporters. Thank you for those of you who are supporting us monthly or who are annually supporting us or every once in a while, whatever it is, thank you. We need your support. We are in growth mode, growth mode. We have been in a place of just great blessing lately and we have more opportunities than we've ever had. And the places we're going, we're making a difference and a change that's lasting and it's fruit that lasts, which is what we always wanted. 
So in order to continue to do that and keep up with the pace of what God has put in front of us, we need to bring on people. Now, I mentioned that last episode. We're looking for an executive admin, somebody that can run my schedule and and, and deal uh, with the bookings and walk with parishes as we get ready for the events that we do there, the Restored Parish Missions. But also, I need a fundraiser, and I'm also looking to bring on guys to work in the ministry later on as well that I could train up and send out to. So we're going to be putting all that out there. Uh, There's no need right now to be sending anything in, applying, because we don't have all that set up yet. We have to raise the money first, and that's why we need people to support us, to continue to support us, those of you that have. And those of you who haven't yet, please consider doing so, so we can hire the right people to continue to do what God wants us to do. What is that? To go out and start amazing, life-changing, vibrant ministry to men in parishes. We've been doing that for a number of years now, and we've had great success with it, and we can't wait to come to your neck of the woods. So if you're a guy who wants a group, right, who wants to start a group or wants to be a part of a group, reach out to us. You can do that by going to justagownthepew.com. You can sign up there. You'll have a call with me. We'll look at the situation, see how we can best help, and move on for there. But that's what we want to do. We want to start all these groups and move forward helping men come back to the faith. So please, if you're interested in starting a group or leading a group or being a part of a group, go to justagownthepew.com and click one of the buttons there on the page. They're all over that page. It'll get you to a, a form to fill out, and then you'll schedule a call with me. If you are a person looking to support, then go to our page at justagownthepew.com. There's a button in the top right corner that says support, or you can go directly to our donation online donation platform, DonorBox. That is www donorbox.org slash pew donorbox.org slash pew p-e-w either way i thank you guys always for listening to this i can't wait for the pilgrimage i hope you will sign up for that and share it out everywhere tell your friends and family so we can just fill that trip and have an amazing group to go out there and experience god's love for us in a new and profound way which i guarantee you will on pilgrimage we did in the holy land i guarantee you will here too Thank you for all of that. And those of you looking to support our work or to help us, go to our website and check that out. So, all right, what's today's show going to be about? Honestly, it's about the need for refuge in our life. This is something that, you know, I wasn't very good at when I was younger. You know, I put my head down. I worked hard. I I was all about making money and moving forward and and having the things I needed to have to, to live the life I thought I needed to have. I didn't take a lot of time for breaks or for rejuvenation or any of those things. Now, I'm not just talking about taking vacation here. What I mean is like stepping back and getting off of the hamster wheel that life can be, right? Sometimes that's what it feels like. We're just running on this hamster wheel or taking a little sip of water like a gerbil or whatever every once in a while. But for the most part, we're just running, 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 trying to keep up this hectic pace, trying to keep up with the Joneses, if you will, and just afraid to step back and recharge and rejuvenate. And when we don't do that, we're not good for anybody. We start to burn out over time. We're like a, a candle that's getting lower and lower and lower, and eventually it's snuffed out because it has nothing left to give. And oftentimes, that's where we can get very quickly. So many of us that are listening or the, of you that are listening to this, you're married, you got kids, you work, your wife probably works, you know, you, your kids are involved in all kinds of things, or if they're not yet and you've just got a bunch of little ones, there's a lot going on. You have the stresses of the world, And it's hard to live our faith in the midst of all of that. It's hard to get our marching orders from God in the middle of that. We've talked about that before, the need for silence in our life and the time to slow down. Like God doesn't say, go out and do. He says, be a lot. Just be. Be present in the moment and be present to me. It's hard to do that when you're constantly trying to keep up with a never-ending to-do list and God finds his way at the bottom of that. So the reason I wanted to talk about that this week was because, you know, it's Labor Day weekend, as I said in the opening of the show, and I hadn't seen my dad in a while. So we made the decision to leave Friday. We checked the kids out of school an hour early, and we loaded up in the truck and and headed down to Bruce, Mississippi, where he lives. You know, a small farm town where my mom and dad were both raised, you know, down the road from each other. They met and fell in love and created a life together and moved up here to Memphis, where I currently live, to, to make that life for our family. And they lived here for 40 years. And then eventually, after Dad decided to retire, which I never thought was going to happen, he worked all the time, they decided to move back down there and tear down the house that my mother's parents had lived in. She was an only child. And then they took some money that they had saved, and they built a retirement home that was big enough to be able to to you know, to know, house my sister and her family, my other sister and her family, and my family whenever we came down there for holidays or just to visit and get together. 
And I got to be honest with you, when I was younger, like I enjoyed the farm for a few minutes. But to me, I always wanted to get back to Memphis, whether it was when I was single and in the middle of my drugs and alcohol problems that I just wanted to get back for the party. Or I just, I don't know, I, I was so used to being on that that habitual hamster wheel, if you will, that I had to get back onto that. Like I couldn't just relax. And so I missed a lot of time down there with my mother, which I really regret. And time that I wish I had known, of course, at that young age, that this was like a, an opportunity to just relax and to refresh and to be built up in, in love and joy with my family. Now, a part of that's youth, right? You, you're just going, 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 and you don't understand. And fixed to be 45 in November. So you start to to look forward to things in life that maybe you didn't do, you know, look forward to before. Did you look at those things in a different light? But I got to tell you, when I go down there now, like we drove into town and before we went to the farm, we went to the grocery store and, you know, walking in this small town, it literally has like one stoplight. It does. It's one stoplight and you're through it. And it's got a Piggly Wiggly and another hometown grocery store and a Napa Auto Parts store and a little town square with a pizza place and some things like that. A Sonic, you know, because every small town in, in the United States, at least in the South, has to have a Sonic drive-in. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's just this wonderful little town that I didn't appreciate so much when I was younger, as I said. But now, like, I walk in, I went in the grocery store, and everybody's speaking to you. Like, doesn't matter, you know, race, creed, color, any of that stuff. Everybody's just like, how you doing? It's a small town feeling. Everybody knows everybody. Now, I'm sure that's a great thing if you're not there all the time. It might not be such a good thing because everybody everybody knows each other's business when you're down there, you know, all the time. My mom and dad used to talk about that a lot. But no, it, it's just when I go down there, I have this feel that I don't have here, you know, in the city of Memphis, right? Like, anywhere you go in, people are just speaking for you, opening the doors. They're just glad to see you. And, a lot of God bless yous and, and take cares and all those kind of things. And it's just this small town feel. And I remember walking out of the grocery store and seeing this young man like who worked there rolling out this lady's groceries. And as he's putting her bags in the car, he's just talking to her about life and the people they know. And it's just this this, this slower pace there, you know, and, and it's just so enjoyable to me. But, you know, the people in the town and then just the peace, like sitting on my dad's front porch watching a car go by on the highway like maybe every 10 minutes, Watch, hearing the wind blow through the pines that line his driveway. I mean, we were out there Saturday, you know, cutting limbs and and just uh, taking things that had broken off in the storms that they've had lately, loading them in the back of the truck and taking them down to the burn pile to, to be put there to burn. It's just peaceful, man. I remember standing there under those pines when the kids were, were dragging things over and you could just hear the wind whipping through the pines and it's like, man, I don't ever take time to stop and appreciate things like that when I'm when I'm in the in the zone, right? When I'm up here in in the place of work and all these things, and you know, one of my favorite things is just time kind of slows down. Like we got up Saturday morning, and my dad's always cooking breakfast and biscuits and bacon and jelly, homemade jelly, all this stuff. It's amazing. You you can put a lot of pounds down there if you're not careful. Just we'll just say that. But, like, we just got up and did the things that need to be done, working on stuff. And then it was done by, like, 10.45 in the morning. And then I looked at my son who was chomping the bit to go fishing in the little pond in the field where I used to go catfishing when I was little. And I went down there and, and, and I took him. And, man, we sat there for hours catching fish, just laughing and talking. And the thing is, I left my phone in the house. Like, my phone is never off of me, and I'm terrible about that. Like, it's always on me, dinging and calling me away from the things that are important. My wife, my kids, like moments of prayer, things like that. But I left it, like, in the house. And just most of the day Saturday, I didn't even have the thing. Like, it wasn't even charged most of the time, and it was awesome. And I just, why am I going on and on about this? I promise you there's a point. But, like, I just, I had things to do with my hands that didn't involve, like, my future and building something and all of those things. It was just doing things that needed to be done because they needed to be done. Grass needed to be cut. Limbs needed to be cut down from trees that were hanging. The driveway needed to be picked up. My dad needed help canning vegetables and my wife did that. Like just doing things that you could do shoulder to shoulder with people in community and just laughing and carrying on and creating memories. And it's just, it's a refuge for me. That's my point. Like something that was maybe even a slight annoyance at one time in my life, having to go all the way two hours away to, to celebrate Christmas or something like that, has now become a place that I love to go to. You know, a lot of times in ministry, I'm, I'm you know, two weekends a month just going, going, going out of town, going to the missions and things that we love doing. But you can get worn out that way. 
And even when we're not doing the missions, we're here every day by myself in this ministry, other than Cecilia, the young lady that's handling my marketing, like just grinding away at this stuff and 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 building and growing and trying to discern what the Lord wants and all those things. You can you can burn out very quickly. And the farm has become a place for me of just great refuge. As soon as like I'm on the way down there, I can feel my shoulders drop, loosen up. I can feel my breathing slow. I could I could turn on some music that my children and I like to sing together in the truck and just start singing those cares away in anticipation of all of us for the girls. It's what, Allison, riding the go-kart around for hours? Is that it? Like Jacob and I were down at the pond, which is a good ways away from the house, 150 yards or so. And we're sitting down there in the bowl of the levee fishing, and I can hear what sounds like someone murdering my daughters, but they're singing <laughs> over the noise of the go-kart because they're having such a good time. And I got to tell you, like sometimes I just don't slow down to, to enjoy those noises and those sounds and those things. And I did this weekend, and it really, in the middle of it all, I, I, I prayed a lot. I sat on that front porch a couple times and felt the wind blow across me and watched the tree, trees shape back, the trees sway back and forth, and it just hearing the the noise of nothingness, you know, and it was it was really, it was really amazing. And 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 as I was praying and thinking about all this stuff. I just started thinking about, you know, Jesus had places of refuge too and how we need those places in our life. You know, if you look at it, Jesus loved, and we found out and heard about this when we were in the Holy Land, but Jesus loved Capernaum. He loved Peter's house. Like that was his base of operations. That's where he went when they were getting off of the road, right? It was to Peter's house. That's where he felt welcome. That's where he could let his hair down, if you will. You know, it's where he could just be with the people that he loved and cared for. It was just a place of refuge for him, and he had many of those. I mean, the Mount Mount Olives. He loves to used to he used to love to go up there and pray, right? He gave the Sermon on the Mount and places like that. You know, he went to Mount Tabor, and he went up there and he took Peter, James, and John. Like he was always going to these places of refuge to get away and to pray. And I mean, Gethsemane that was another one. You know, when he goes there the night of his passion, it talks about in Scripture that he went to a place that was familiar to him. Jesus went there and prayed a lot when he was outside of Jerusalem. And that's the thing. Like we all need those places of refuge. And first and foremost, the number one place of refuge in our life has to be prayer. I mean, yes, Jesus was going to these places, but there were places that opened up the space of 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 relaxation, of quiet, of peace for him. But the, the goal of having those places is where he could enter into prayer, right? Where he could get away from things. I mean, think about once Jesus started performing miracles and all those things, like how busy his life was. He was crowded and surrounded everywhere he went, and he needed those places to go and hear his father's voice. And we need those same places, right? That's what the farm did for me this weekend is as I come home, like we're about to start this big conference I talked about. And then I've got more missions and things to come to finish out the year. And the kids have just started school and they have all their sports and everything else. Angela's in grad school and a full-time mom, full-time job. So to go and have a couple of days to just breathe and relax and, and to, to rejuvenate and to revive is just an amazing gift. And I just wonder how many pa- people have places of refuge in their life. And look, it doesn't have to be some you know picturesque farm you know, away from you somewhere. It could be a room in your house. It could be the Adoration Chapel around the corner. It could be, you know, the park, in the park bench around the corner where you go and sit. But do you have places in your life where you can go and just find peace and solitude and quiet and and, and not even just solitude? Because, I mean, as I said, my family, my dad, everybody was around, but places to just breathe, to take that deep breath that you've been holding in so long that you don't even know that you're doing Right? Like that's what God wants for us is to have these places. And and Jesus certainly had them, but he went there for purpose. Like Jesus never did anything without purpose. He was a man of intention. Right. And that intention was, you know, like he said in John 14, 31, the world must know that I love the Father and that I do everything that he commands me. Well, the only way that Jesus knew what God commanded him was when he went away to pray, when he went to to take refuge in, in his father. And you hear like over 80 times in the Bible the word refuge is used and your know, refuge is a place of hideaway, a place to to feel safe, a place to go and and to and to just rest. And so Jesus found that place in his father always. And he went there in times of, of when he was in great need. And some of those needs were like when he needed to recharge. When he sent the disciples out, you know, uh, two by two, and he was out doing his thing too. 
What does it say when he got back in Mark and when they got back in Mark 6, 30 through 32? It says the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. So Jesus knew that his disciples had been out there, his apostles had been out there doing the work that he'd called them to do, and they were exhausted. They'd been going to and from, going about, it says in Scripture that I just read. And Jesus knew it was important for him and them as a community to go out and to find some rest. And so that's what he instructed him to do. So Jesus used these places of refuge to recharge for both him and his apostles. But then he also used it in times of, 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 of need, like when he, when he needed to grieve. What do I mean by that? Well, in Mark 14, 13, you know, Jesus has just heard the, the news of his beloved cousin, John the Baptist, being beheaded. And it says when Jesus found out about it, it says, when now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to, deserted, uh, to a deserted place by himself. Jesus went away to mourn. He went away to grieve. You know, he loved John the Baptist, and he loved his cousin, and, and this the, the last great prophet that went ahead of Jesus, right? And, and, and so he went to mourn the loss of a loved one and a family member and somebody he held very dear to him. So he went and took a place of refuge in that time of, of, of need to grieve. You know, another thing he did was he always went away to that place of refuge when he needed to make decisions. You know, in Luke 6, 12 through 13, he, it says, Now during those days he went out to the mountain to pray. And he spent the night with them, whom he also, excuse me, he went off to, I messed that up, excuse me. Now, during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples, and he chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles. That's Luke 6, 12 through 13. Excuse me for the, the tongue slip there. But again, an example of why Jesus took refuge, he went off when he needed to make decisions, and he prayed. He got his marching orders from God. How many times in our life are we facing decisions and we're just caught up in, in anxiety and worry and, and, and doubt and all these things? And the one thing we often don't do is to step away from it all and to take it and to give it to God in prayer. And like I said, it doesn't have to be some trip to the beach or we're not talking about vacation here. We're talking about just stepping away. Yes, it can be vacation. But like my wife and my kids and I, we're going uh, to the Ozarks in October on fall break. We love to do that every year. And it's just to re refocus on what matters. God first. We go to Mass while we're gone. But often, like, just being with each other and being present. Like, I'll take my laptop to answer emails, but I'll do that at night when my kids are at sleep or asleep. I want to spend that time and that day with them and finding that joy in them that recharges me to find that joy again in what we do in, that, in our call to serve the Lord. And so Jesus went off in these places to do those sort of things to when he needed to make decisions. But again, it could be a, a prayer space you have in your house. It could be the church when nobody's there on a weekday, right? Stop it in on your lunch break. It could be the adoration chapel. It could be someone in your life. Like I love to go have lunch with my old youth minister, Jeff Williamson, who's now the pastor of the Baptist church. Yes, I said Baptist. He's not Catholic, but I find great refuge in him. He's a man of the faith. He loves Jesus. And He's been doing this a lot longer than I have. And I can go and find time with him and spend with him to be rejuvenated and be refreshed and, and energized to get in the Lord because of his love of the Lord. And don't think we don't pray when we get together. We do. And that's what recharges us both and gives us both inspiration and joy to see what the Lord is doing in each one of us. So taking a place of refuge is a, is, is a must, and especially when we're going to make great decisions in our life. Jeff, Pastor Jeff that I just mentioned, when I was thinking about leaving, go out in ministry, he was one of the first person I was spending time with because I trusted him, and I knew that he loved the Lord. So I went, and even though it wasn't just so, it wasn't you know, me by my solitary self, I went and took refuge in someone who I knew was taking refuge in God, and it helped me make decisions in my life. You know, some other things here. Jesus went when he was dealing with worry, right? And, and, and you may think, well, when was Jesus worried? Well, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was going into his passion. You know, he sweat blood. You know, he, he was fearful. He was full of anxiety because he was fully God and fully man. He felt the things that we would have felt when we, if we had the knowledge of my flesh is going to be ripped off my body. I'm going to have nails driven through my hand, and I'm going to suffocate to death, right? We would have been worried too. So Jesus, it says in... In Luke 29, uh, 30, or excuse me, 22, 39 through 41, it says that, 
You know, he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away, and he knelt down and prayed. This was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, I mean, you could feel that when you're there in the Holy Land, as I told you we were earlier with Father Larry and Angela and a group of 71 people I've grown to know and love. Like, I remember feeling this presence like and this peace that Jesus must have felt there at times, but I also felt the anxiety and, the, and just looking out over the old city and knowing that Jesus would have been able to see these people coming for him. But Jesus went there in a place of refuge to pray in his hour of need, right, to grow closer again to the Father. Because, again, ultimately, our one true refuge on this planet is prayer. It's meeting God in those places of decision, of those places of worry, of those places of, of rejuvenation. It's a call back to loving and, and putting God first again in our life so that we can be as intentional as Jesus was. And then to prepare for his work. Oftentimes when Jesus knew things were coming up and miracles and things like that, he went away to pray. He went away to get ready for the work he was going to do. Those marching orders I've mentioned a couple times already. He went and he was present to God. And look, we all need the same thing. We need a place to, to unwind and to refresh. We need places to slow down to get off the hamster wheel, to get off the merry-go-round of life, right? To be able to just be there and be still and find those places of joy. And I'm not saying you got to go and take every Catholic book you've got and five different Bibles and, and all your online stuff, but just a place where you go and just relax. You know, there's oftentimes retreat centers. We have one here in Memphis and they're redoing it. And they've got a wonderful friend and supporter of mine, Steve Frakia, that's that's out there rejuvenizing the place and revitalizing it. And, and he's inviting people all the time. Look, you don't have to wait for a retreat experience. Come out here on a weekday and spend an hour in prayer. Walk in the woods. Get away from things. Get away from the noise. And I'm telling you, folks, many, many of you have multiple jobs. You have many things that you do in your life. You're, you're raising kids. You're seeing all these other things. You have all kind of things you do in the church. And those are all great things. But if we're never taking the time to rejuvenate, to recharge our batteries, to, to be present to God, then, then we're going to fail in a lot of things. And we're going to be going through the motions without the passion and the zeal that we need to really affect people for our Lord. And so as I sat there and I listened to the wind went through the ponds, as I watched my son laugh and play as he caught fish, as I heard the, the screams and echoes of my daughter singing from 100 yards away as they're you know putting the pedal to the metal in a golf cart around the around the farm as, as I'm watching my dad laugh and, and and just find joy in my children and just the hugs and the, the kisses and I love yous and the stories that were told. It reminded me how often that we all need a place of refuge in our life. And again, this doesn't have to be some piece of property somewhere. It doesn't have to be some extravagant vacation. It could be in the corner of the room that you're sitting in, a place where you could go and withdraw and you can turn off your senses, you can turn off the noise, you can throw your phone in the other side of the building or the other side of your home and just be and seek the Lord in that. One of my favorite pictures I've ever seen is an artist, I don't know his name, but it's this picture of Jesus laying on a mountain. He's laying up against the rock. like He's got his feet out on two rocks and he's leaning against this other rock and he's got a shepherd's staff there and it's night and the sky is purple and there's stars everywhere and he's just looking up being present to his father and allowing his father to love him and to pour into him and to be rejuvenated so he can go out and do the work that he is called to do by his father folks we need the same thing if jesus did it we need to do it that's the model jesus is the model in our life so how do we do this first and foremost seek prayer as your place of refuge your immediately and, and total and, and starting point for refuge is always prayer. That's why in the Old Testament, in Psalm 46, and so many other places, you hear people taking refuge. You are my refuge, Lord. You, know, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. You hear all these things. It's about going back to Jesus and the Father in prayer. And St. John Christendom even says that. He says, prayer is a place of refuge for every worry a foundation for cheerfulness, a source of constant happiness, and a protection against sadness. That is our true refuge, is prayer, is going into that conversation and that refuge with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. So we've got to seek prayer as our first place of refuge. Two, find a place you feel at peace and spend some time there. It doesn't matter where it is. It could be a playground you used to play on when you were a kid. If you found joy and peace somewhere, go back to that place. If you've got a prayer sit, you know, altar or, or, or stand in your house 
go there. If it's your adoration chapel around the corner, if it's a quiet place that you you have a memory in somewhere, a joyful memory, go there. If it's the church, which I used to love to do, I used to love to go to 815 Mass with my kids every day when all the kids had filed out and when everybody was gone, I would just sit in there and pray. In fact, some of the first videos that we ever did that launched this ministry were my buddy David just sitting there in a pew recording me on my my old iPhone that was fuzzy and all get out. But I sat there for an hour before I ever called David down because I wanted that peace, that refuge. And to watch the light pour in the stained glass windows and, and the sound of nothingness in the church and just staring at that tabernacle and just saying, I love you, God, speak to me. Your servant's listening, right? We need those places of refuge. So whatever that is in your life, if you don't have one, create one, find a place in your home or go to a church or find somewhere around you to find that place of refuge three, and then be consistent about it, right? Don't, don't fall into this, this keeping up with the Joneses and going 100 miles an hour in your life all the time. That's not what Jesus wants. If we're busy doing, we don't ever have time to be. And if we're not just being still, being present, being quiet, being a good listener, then we're never going to feel that camaraderie and that closeness to God that we need to have in our life. That connection, that, that, that vine, right? That's what Jesus says. I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Well, how is the sap delivered? Through prayer, right? Prayer is our branch. Back to the vine, right? That lead back to the vine. So my brothers and sisters, I don't know if this made any sense this week. I hope it did. But we all need those places of refuge in our life. And again, I'm not talking about taking vacations and all that stuff just to go and, you know, drink a beer on the beach or any of that stuff. That's nice too. But finding places where you're being intentional about taking time out of your life to slow down, to get on the merry-go-round or get off the merry-go-round and to be with the one who loves you most, God and his son, Jesus Christ. Folks, we need that in our life. Again, we've got this amazing pilgrimage coming up in 2024 going to Italy. You want to talk about taking refuge? This place, this this pilgrimage has time built in for your own time to do whatever you want in Rome and some other places too. We're going to be in some of the most beautiful churches in the world. So if you like a place right now to book a time for refuge in your life, then look at your calendar June 20, uh, 3rd through the 14th of 2024. Kids are out of school, all that stuff. Look at it, go to our website, sign up for it, and and join us on a time of refuge on these Eucharistic Miracle Tours. My brothers and sisters, it's always a pleasure to be here with you. If you're looking to support us, again, you can do that at justagodinthepew.com. Now let's take it to our Heavenly Father, our place of refuge for prayer to have refuge in our life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, for many of us, the world moves like a fast-paced merry-go-round that we struggle to get off of. We get so caught up in trying to keep pace that we neglect our need for time to refresh and recharge. Help us to unplug and seek places of refuge in our lives. And Father, whenever the one, the evil one tries to make us feel guilty for taking time to pause, remind us that even your son Jesus took time to rest and reset. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>